Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned to find out more. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. You are now in tune to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I'm David. And today, I'm really, I'm always excited, aren't I? (laughs) For those that listen to us, this is episode 33, and I'm really excited because on our first podcast, we always talk about our awakening moment or um, what our door opening moment, if you will. And I met this lovely young lady during that time when I was doing that year-long process at Horizon Center for Intuitive Awareness. Uh, We had our, at the time, it was called MySpace, but it was learning more about our personal space. And then the second class was the next steps from that. And then we did a nine-month growing class as far as growing in psychic development. And we had started, I want to say, seven or eight individuals. And at the end, when we graduated, there were only three. And Yvette Matzik was one of those people. And so that was in 10, 2010 when we graduated, and seven years later, there's so much that we need to uncover. We've obviously spoken before that, before the podcast. I would like to welcome Yvette Matzek. Thanks for coming to the podcast today, Yvette. Well, thank you, Hamza, and thank you, David, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, great. Glad you're here. Absolutely, and and one of the ones that I actually went through, which is great because uh, when I was preparing for the interview, I was thinking about our uh, our confidence and awareness and validity when we were doing our line reading and just like, is this really happening? Am I seeing what I'm what I think I'm seeing? And mm-hmm. Joanne used to always remind us to go ahead and let that out and build that confidence, and we were getting validation from the people we were reading. And that seems so many moons ago. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, Yvette, we can kind of go from there. Sure. No, I'd love to. Yes, I absolutely remember doing those sessions and uh, um, spending spent a little too much time comparing myself to how I thought others were doing. And, and then I would go and do a reading, and then I would get validation, and then I would be so surprised when they asked, how did you know that? And... Uh, <laughs> So it was it was quite the quite the process, but um, you know I don't think anybody's journey is direct and you know to the point to where they are today. And you know I would say my experience is no different. I uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I spent the first 35 years there. And I met somebody through work, and it, that's how I ended up moving down to Georgia. I spent 27 years in the corporate world. Um, working as an IT project manager and really did not enjoy too much of that other than the people aspect. And then at some point I started really digging on my own personal time about what was going on with me and learning and and tools and, you know, as you mentioned, um, you know, spending a bunch of time at Horizon Center and, and going through, you know, those classes and then the intuitive development program which really set me up with a lot of great tools and understanding and continued to broaden my horizon. And I just really kept going from there and digging. And um, I always felt there was a healing thing that I was supposed to be doing and just always kept wondering, when was I going to figure that out? And I would say now, fast forward to October 2007 or November 2017, um, I'm like, oh, I think uh, the pieces are starting to come together. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm laughing oh, on both sides of my face here because I remember uh, speaking to graduate people that had graduated before us, and they would tell us things, and we're like, oh, that won't happen to us. And then the same thing happened. And so what I want to point out is when, right before graduation, you know, there's always waves of new people coming in. And when we were holding space doing meditation, it would maybe be an hour of holding that space. And the new, newer people that were coming in, they couldn't 
right? When we first started, we couldn't hold yep. space for an hour. And so they're yep. like, oh, should I belong here? And so when we graduated, we were like, okay, what's the next step? Where do we go next? And then Joanne and others were like, goodbye. Like, you guys leave from here. <laughs> yep. And it was kind of a void. Like, what do we do? Like, I think we were looking for that color by numbers. What do we do next? And what you somewhat alluded to was, you're, you get your basic tools from Horizon, but then you kind of use that as your foundation and take you to the next level. So I don't want to give the impression that you just, oh my goodness, I went on the top of the mountain when I graduated and then here I am in 217. If you kind of fill in the gaps, that would be helpful. <laughs> sure, because that was certainly not my experience. <laughs> um, you know, I went through, you know, it was interesting, you know, there are always those like life defining moments. And I think a couple of them for me was, um, I think at that point I had started separating my identity, which previously was completely wrapped around my professional job, my IT project manager. And that's, that's just like who I was. And when I started peeling that off to figure out, well, who was I? Because that was an aspect of me, but that wasn't me. Um, and so, you know, I went through level after level after level of separating from that. Volunteering really helped me, you know, explore a whole other world where people did not care what you did as a professional. Um, you know, they were, I was doing animal rescue, and they were there to help animals. And it didn't matter, you know, what you did in your day job. That wasn't really so interesting. And so, you know, I was like, oh, the world is so much bigger. Um, so there was some of that, and then in it's now going to be six years ago, I was laid off from my job as an IT project manager at Xerox, and so part of me was like, oh, so now I'm supposed to go do my healing thing. And um, then I, of course, totally got stuck in my own muck and, um, you know, rolled around in that for a little while, and uh, I did some contracting with IT. Then I got mad. I got mad at – I was literally – I would say I was mad at God, um, you know, I, I thought this was supposed to be obvious and I still don't know what to do and why aren't you telling me what to do? And so I, I definitely went through waves of, of thrashing around with that. And then I even took another in-house, uh, I took a, another in-house job and I thought, geez, am I ever going to do my healing work? And I just had a hawk go flying right by, which is really cool as I say that <laughs> as I'm sitting outside. Um, and so, so the, the layoff was a big deal. And then my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Um, and it's going to be, you know, in another several days that it's going to be two years that he transitioned over. And uh, so, you know, you can imagine the, the type of growth and introspection that goes through. And it was a real quick thing. He was, we knew something was definitively up in August. We got a diagnosis in September, and he passed away November 13th. And uh, I, I stepped away, it, which then created that space for me to step away from my job. And I ultimately resigned. And so I know one of the gifts my father had to offer to me was to just really sort of force to create that space to just totally disengage from that aspect of myself and really go inward and, and understand, you know, what's going on. And then, and then I spent a year of thinking I need to go get a job and spend some other time. And I finally let that go probably earlier this year where it's like, no, I'm ready to do the healing, um, the healing work. I mean, I'd had an inkling, um, but I still didn't know what to do with it. So my process was, um, yeah, I certainly did not seven years ago go, okay, cool, ready to go. I, I felt like I had so many false starts where I got stuck. And it was all me. I just kept getting in, 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 in my own way. And so um, I'm very grateful, you know, for where I'm at right now. And I can, uh, you know, very much appreciate the journey and understand why. No, it wasn't just a, you know, some people wake up and go, oh, this is what I'm doing one day. That has not been my process. And uh, it's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of practice in learning to trust. That's one I know. That's one of my big lessons 
that I came here to learn is trust, trust, trust. It's all right there. I just need to own it, and I need to be able to see it. Wow. So I always like to ask this question, Yvette, so I'll just ask you, what were the the circumstances that led you to walk through the doors at Horizon for the very first time? Was it like a friend said, hey, you know, I had this reading at this place, you should check it out, or what, what, what were the circumstances that led you there for the very, very first time? I ended up... I'm trying to remember how I I ended up getting hooked up and did some healing work with um, one of the teachers, Carol, one of the teachers that was at Horizon. And so I had done some healing sessions with her, um, and it was like, an oh, by the way, and I'm teaching this class at Horizon, and, and she I think she taught that first intro class. You might oh. be interested. And so I said, oh, well, I really, I really – liked Carol and I liked her teaching and I felt very safe and comfortable with her. And so I said, okay, I'll go. And that was, that was how I ended up literally walking in the door. And, um, you know, and then others were literally there as I walked in and, you know, started, started digging and learning and um, constantly questioning myself because I remember Specifically in class, we'd be sitting in class and Hamza would see some spirit go walking by and make a comment, and I didn't see it, and so (laughs) Hamza must be better than me. So there was a bunch of that noise that has taken years to just let go layer after layer on, but that's really, that was my initial that that literally got me in the door. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I always, like I said, I always like to hear, you know, and when you ask those questions to people, the stories that you get are just fascinating of how they, mm-hmm. whatever, wherever that center was that they did, you know, got a reading for the first time or a healing or their first hello. It's always a really interesting story. So I always like to ask that question. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was in that class with uh, Carol for, I don't think we were together in that, in the same class. We didn't get together to intuitive development, but yep. Carol, yes, she was phenomenal. And for you to meet her, was that, like David asked, was that your first reading or were you interested in, in, in speaking with other people before Carol? Um, I definitely have had, had an interest. So that was, that was not my first experience. Um, I really started, I think for me when I consider what was my like very first step was in, I was 22 years old. Um, and I was really, so at that point I had graduated from college, um, and had started my first job. And, you know, when I made my choice around what do I do for a career? So growing up in the eighties, um, you know, my, my father got laid off from steel mill in Cleveland. And, you know, when I was 16, that was like that really made a big impact on me. I remember when he came home, he closed the door. You know, he came home early on a Friday. It was 3 o'clock. I know where I was sitting. He closed the door. He leaned against the door, and he said, they let me go. And so, you know, that was really scary. Um, And so for me, that was a defining moment based out of fear, but it was a defining moment where I was like, I am going to get a job where – I will make good money. This was my perspective, 16 years old. I'm going to get a good job where I'll make good money and I'll be safe and I'll never be in that situation because it was really scary and unsettling, you know, as my dad struggled to figure out what to do next. Um, And so that guided me when I ended up going to college that I said, well, computers, computers are a big deal. I'm going to go into computers. Um, and so I got a computer information systems degree and was miserable a good chunk of my, even college, because math was not a strong suit for me. Business was, but the computers weren't. And, uh, you know, just working through that, got my job and then um, started as a programmer, which I wasn't a good programmer, um, but I was a good project manager. So that's what I ended up moving into. But I was miserable. And at 22, I had really suffered a lot and struggled with depression. And so my first step I consider was when I literally walked into a therapist's office and said, you know, I am really struggling. And 
I spent, you know, the next X, literally unraveling that, that on, or peeling that onion, I spent four years of digging deep on, you know, family dynamics and what was going on with me and then what, what traumatic things happened to me in my childhood, some of which I remembered, some of which I had suppressed. And then, so that initial curiosity, doing a lot of talking, and I don't, you know, had a lot of value, but I think in some ways re-traumatized myself. And then I started switching that focus to, there's got to be a better way. There has to be an easier way. And so I started exploring, you know, different different ways of healing. Um, I was much, you know, I was curious about from getting a reading perspective, hey, what's what, what's what's coming up in my life and, you know, how can that information sort of help me? And reading, getting a reading in general is, has served me from the standpoint of it's helping open up my perspective and see possibilities that maybe I hadn't seen. And so I've literally just followed that trail of breadcrumbs, um, you know, when I was in Cleveland. And then, you know, when I moved down to Georgia 11 years ago, I really hadn't done any of that, well, what about me and getting truly getting hands-on tools. I didn't do that until I walked into a Horizon, into Horizon Center. So mm. it was a bunch of years digging and looking at some stuff, but then for really for me to make it personal and then really start taking responsibility for myself and not feeling so reliant on someone else is, I would say, when I walked into Horizon. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's interesting because when light when when we look at it, it doesn't look linear at all, and for most for the most part, it isn't. <laughs> but when we look uh-huh. back, we can kind of see where the where everything connects. And so offline, we were talking about uh, you were and you were like most of us, where you know go to school, get a job, that type of thing, get the gold watch and live in ex-Serbia, which is in Atlanta, way outside of suburbia, right? And <laughs> you, had, you had that existence, but then recently you had moved out into the mountains, and I know you had mentioned that uh, you seem to have more of an openness and awareness since being in that environment, plus rubbing it in that hawks are flying by during the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist, but he went cruising right by. <laughs> yes. So you, what's interesting is you're asking the question, I just went, oh, from a timing perspective. So so we graduated from the Intuitive Development Program, I think, June, July of 2010. Well, funny timing, um, sort of. My husband and I, in July 2010, purchased our first cabin up here in the mountains. So that was what really just totally got me hooked and enthralled with with being up here. And you know, every possible weekend, and it was a good. It was so, it was, and it was a two-hour drive, so it was manageable. Um, at that time, I was working from home, so was my husband. So we could hop in the car, take all the animals with us, and um, you know, we did a ton of long weekends, and we'd work up there you know, like on a Friday and the following Monday, and then we went exploring on weekends. And um, just just totally fell in love with the area. And um, what's cool is I am so far north that I can, from our deck where we live right now, I can see three states. I can see Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee. And, um, you know, I'm blessed to have a beautiful view. And, of course, the, the autumn colors are, I think, we're getting close to peaking up here as the leaves keep falling down. But, you know, we did that, loved, loved, loved that. So I spent a ton of time, you know, going hiking, a lot of time in the woods, going kayaking. Um, and just, and what was great was just when, you went, when I went up there, it, it was a total unplug. So I didn't have all of my, whatever the to-do list was at home, I left at home. Um, which was fantastic. And um, I would say three three years into that, let's see. Yeah, three, four years into that, four years. Um, at that point, I was contracting at Coca-Cola, doing IT sort of stuff, and a friend of mine made the comment to me, do you have any idea 
how much you talk about going to the mountains. And I looked at her really weird, like, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, I think it's nice to go to the mountains. And if I go once a year, that's good for me. But there's so much other things that I'm interested in that, you know, I go once a year. You're always going. And I was like, huh. And literally the light bulb switched. And uh, because we always said we'd move up here sometime. And it was in that moment, made a decision, that's it. I'll figure out work later. It will happen. And um, it was, that was a, like a Friday. It clicked on Sunday. And by that Friday, the following Friday, we had our house listed in North Atlanta. We had put up a rental up for sale, and we had the cabin listed for sale. And it was like that fast. And 60 days later, we were moving into our place. Wow. Um, and it happened that fast. And then I even, because I was contracting down in Atlanta, and I was in the middle of a big project, and I wanted to see it through. So I stayed with friends for three months. I commuted. I stayed in town during the week, and then I came home on weekends. And then as that was, um, as that was wrapping up, literally my second to last day, I got a job offer um, from a, a software company in Cleveland, of all places, um, but I could work remote. And, uh, you know, that sort of then came together. And then I wasn't there very long because then my dad got sick. Um, mm-hmm. But that was sort of just like, it was one of those, you know, people have those moments where they said they just, something happened and they took a leap. That was definitely one of those crazy moments. And everything fell in the, into place. Everything. Um, which was all the more validation for me that, completely on the right path, keep going, that is what you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, have not regretted it a a moment. You know, people have asked, are you sorry you moved up there? Absolutely not. Um, (laughs) It's not for everybody, um, but it absolutely is for me. And uh, (laughs) – It's spectacular. And, you know, Hamza, as you said, as far as, like, the environment, I do feel so completely supported by the environment, and I know that part has been part of my healing journey where I'm literally surrounded by trees, and I know the trees are really helping me out along with, I can't even imagine how many helpers I have. I know I'm not even aware of half my helpers that I have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So completely it sounds like the right your dad was one me. of them. Sounds like your dad really, was one of them, too. He really was. And, you know, that took me, I'm trying to think when, you know, that's, that kind of perspective obviously takes a little bit of time to come to. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, my God, what a gift. Because, and, it, and I have, you know, I really, yeah, I miss my dad very deeply. Um, and I know you know, and he, he checks in. He checks in all the time mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know he's happy. He's good. He's great. Um, but what a gift. And I just couldn't imagine, you know, only the universe can orchestrate something like that because, you know, mm-hmm. to, for that final push to, to, get out of, to get out of work, literally out of the corporate world because it was, exactly. I decided... <laughs> I just, I, by the time I decided, because I really was struggling, because my parents were living two hours away, um, work really stepped up. My team lead just totally covered for me while I was figuring out what to do. And then I was driving two hours and taking my dad to, you know, to chemo or you know, whatever needed to be done. And um, so back and forth and, and back and forth. And my last day of work... Um, you know, he passed away one week after I, I officially was, was on a leave of absence. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, one week. Let me ask you and, about checking in, too, because with yeah. uh, checking in, I'm reminded of Joanne, and she had mentioned um, when, her, when her son had passed that the relationship that she had with him in, in third dimension was totally different than the, the relationship she has now. 
And intellectually, I kind of knew that, you know, just talking to her off and on. And then I, I, I started feeling the same type of dynamics change with my sister who passed away a year ago. And as you were talking, I'm just re- re- reminded of the 80s, right? And you were talking about, well, this was a defining moment because of my dad. And then your dad kind of sticking around until you actually made that transition, like you both made a transition to your next phase. So do you find that, would it, do you find a different dynamic with him now versus in third dimension? Um, I would, I would say yes. He, um, it's, it's, it's interesting when he sort of, um, you know, when he pops up, because he'll, he'll pop up in the car. You know, he likes to, when, when you're up in the mountains and you need to go somewhere else, you're in the car. <laughs> um, sometimes longer rather than shorter, but at least you're not sitting in Atlanta traffic. Um, so, you know, all of a sudden he'll be, a lot of times he'll be sitting in the back seat of the car. All of a sudden I have a sense he is sitting back there. Um, or, you know, all of a sudden he literally just will pop up or on one of my visits to my brother in D.C., all of a sudden I could, I literally, all of a sudden I knew he was sitting on the couch just sort of sitting there smiling, listening and taking everything in, you know, and, and hanging out. Um, so it's interesting. I feel like in some ways I am communicating a lot more with him now and I'm a lot more aware now than I was. I, I spent, I think more time being wrapped up in day to day junk. Um, than as always, you know, that, that one-on-one time. I, you know, we were all, so my family, we're from Cleveland, and then I moved down here. Then one of my brothers moved down within a year after I moved down. And then, you know, my parents ended up retiring, and then they came down too. And so, um, you know, it was nice that most of my immediate family was, was so close. But in some regards, I didn't see them as much as, you know, if, if you go back and you should yourself, which is never helpful. Um <laughs> You know, they were they were 30 minutes away, um, but, you know, didn't see them as much as now looking back. And so I would say I've made, I'm making some changes now in, in my other relationships because of that. Because, you know, you do, on this side, you only, you, there's only so many opportunities. And so, I don't know. But I would say it, it's the dynamic, I would say, has changed and there's a, a lot more conversation now in some ways than there was before. And seeing that, you know, he kind of, kind of pushed as you're, as you're sharing your story, he kind of pushed it to me in my picture. He keeps pushing you along throughout. And like you had mentioned, you know, um, you would think things would happen linearly, like in 2010, maybe something would happen in 2011 with regards to spirituality. But you had mentioned that there was a magazine or a weekly a spiritual mag that comes out that maybe your dad put into your presence. I, I'd love for you to talk about that because you have an upcoming workshop, and I want to tie in those two together. Sure. Um, so, you know, we talked about me feeling like I'm supposed to do something healing. And so I know that I – and I've known this for a while um, – that I, I – I channel some pretty high vibe healing energy. It's not, I'm a Reiki master, but it's not Reiki. It's different. I've gotten enough feedback from people that, um, you know, it's definitely feels like a different experience. So I've been, things have been sort of stepping up and I'm feeling, been feeling more comfortable to just actually just start telling people because the people that have known me for any length of time, I didn't necessarily even discuss like the healing, you know, any sort of healing work or anything like that because it's, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling compelled or comfortable or both. And now that I, now that I am. And so, let's see. So several weeks ago, I received an email that I'm not clear on how I got on the distribution list, but um, it was one of those, it, it, it was from Oracle 2020, and it was talking about an upcoming event called Fall into Wellness, and they were seeking practitioners. 
and I'm not clear how I got on their distribution list or if I've been on and it always went to junk, but this email did not. It was in my inbox. I saw it. I read it, and I'm like, I should respond to this, um, which, big de- which is a big deal for me. And um, so I had a con- you know, went back and forth email-wise, and I said, well, I, I channel this really high vibe energy. So it's, you know, I do healing work, and it's you know a healing energy, and you know I can talk a little bit more about some of the really cool experiences some people have had. And she said, well, you know, we already have enough of that, so maybe next year at our next event, unless there's a cancellation. And the second I heard the word cancellation, I knew there was going to be a cancellation. <laughs> yeah. So, so there was a cancellation. And uh, so that just has propelled me, you know, forward with um, now I'm participating in my first event. And, but they were specifically, so this is another couple interesting cool things from a timing perspective and wow, isn't, isn't the universe phenomenal. Um, I ended up picking a workshop. So she specifically wanted someone that could do polarity balancing. And so I took a workshop in September on polarity balancing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which is very it, polarity balancing is absolutely cool and very phenomenal. I would say pretty simple in a lot of regards, but wow, powerful, powerful stuff. Where you know, what is it as our, a as a foundation? What is polarity balancing? So so so, so as a foundation, uh, polarity balancing is based on Ayurvedic um, practice and, and and the five elements that they use to explain things. So there's air, water, uh, ether, fire, and earth. And so our bodies are one big electromagnetic field. And so as things happen to us in our lives, some of those electronic circuits get turned off, whether you know, it's an overt physical trauma or an emotional trauma or you know, anywhere in between. Things sort of start getting turned off, and when things get turned off, you're not flowing, and then you start having symptoms. Whether and it can be so you're you're out of balance. So it can be anything from depression to an illness to some physical discomfort to anything in between. And what's really super cool with with this is you literally can hold some points and you and you start opening up circuits and things start flowing um so even if and there's a there's a million different not a million but there's a lot of different protocols that have been developed you know specifically for whether it's you know there's one for um attention deficit disorder or schizophrenia or depression or fibromyalgia or um, I don't know, literally, you have digestive issues, you have, you name it, there's, there's something for that, um, literally. But what's cool when is you said even points, just, I'm just sorry. real quick, when you said points, are you talking spiritual points, energetic points, or physical points on the body? That's a great question. So, yes, sort of. Um, so, literally, a physical... There are physical points on your body, so, you know, things where, you know, your meridians, where your energy is flowing, if, if you're familiar with, you know, the meridians that go through your whole body. So there's, they can be mapped to that. So, you know, as an example, um, like for the air element, you know, you've got some points on your shoulders, you've got points near your kidneys, and then points on your calves. And if you literally, if, if someone holds those points, in a specific order, it literally turns things on from the positive, neutral to negative, and then that energy starts flowing. And so, you know, as an example, you know, my mom was feeling pretty down a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, well, you know, let me, let me work on you a little bit. And she hopped on the table, and I literally balanced her five elements, so I held those points for each of those elements. She felt like a million bucks when she got off the table, and, you know, the depression had completely shifted out of her space. Mm. Um, 
so, you know, one of the other things is you end up feeling, and, and from a physical perspective, you can feel warmth, you can feel tingling, um, it, twitching, just literally as that energy starts moving through the system. Um, but people, you know, express that they've had profound, feel profoundly more relaxed, significantly lighter, um, and just all around, you know, much better. So what I found is, so, so I found this completely fascinating and exciting, and I've been using it on, on clients, and they've been having, a, you know, a great experience. So, but I, this other work I do is I'm, I'm channeling, or it's, and I compare it to Reiki because it's, a, it's, a, it's an energetic healing that I am a conduit for, or it comes through me, you know, to the person that I'm sending it to. And so it was, I just shook my head when, you know, I got the email about, well, we have a cancellation. Can you, are you able to do polarity balancing? I'm like, well, of course, because I can. And I've gotten, you know, people are having great results, you know, from, from doing that. And so this event, um, this Fall into Wellness event, which is, next Sunday, November 12th, and it's from 12 to 6, and it's at the Inner Space um, in Sandy Springs on uh, Vernon Woods Drive. And so this event is completely focused around healing, so healing and health. And so, you know, there will be anywhere from a massage therapist to, you know, I'm going to be there doing polarity balancing, to uh, somebody is doing something called, you know, a, a gong bath, which is like, you know, just being immersed in sound. Somebody's doing chakra healing, uh, chair, chair massage, to, to light therapy, brainwave testing, all sorts of funky stuff. Um, so, so a whole broad spectrum. So I was just amazed of how that sort of opened up that, oh, here's this event, and Yvette, you should go. (laughs) I like to share another point of synchronicity as well. We talked a little bit about it offline, but I think that the listeners to the podcast would appreciate. So a couple of weeks ago, you were on with your uh, other business partner, and you guys were doing something in the mountains for healing. And ultimately, something happened where he was unable to come, but it would push you into the forefront of giving you further confirmation and validation to your, to your attributes. So I'd love for you to tell a brief story of how that unfolded. Well, sure. So um, we, were, we had several people and actually close friends coming up um, for a, a, another friend to come down and, and uh, associate that we were going to do this awesome nature workshop, connecting with nature in the mountains. And so, and I was going to be hosting it. So since Ryan wasn't able to make it down, it's like, well, it's a beautiful fall weekend. We still need to get together. And so let's, you know, make some sort of alternative plan. So as part of that weekend, um, I uh, said, well, you know what? So let's, let's, let's play a little bit and um, let's go down to my healing room and um, so let's do some healing work and see what kind of experiences everybody has. So I started out with doing literally a polarity balancing session. And so I balanced the five elements on everybody. And what's really cool with, with this, and I would say probably most, most other healing energetic sort of modalities, is you could, it, it's not you have to physically be there or you've got to be the person that you've got the hands on doing. It's intention is everything. And, and being clear on what you're doing and setting that intention, um, <laughs> you can do most anything. And so I literally had somebody on the table, and then the other two people were on math, and so I worked on everybody a little bit. So we did this, we did the healing, we did the polarity piece, and then I said, you know, now I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my energy and just sort of bathe you guys in this lovely healing energy that feels really, really awesome and I've gotten all sorts of interesting experiences. So, and the, my, my friends that were going through this, 
to have varying degrees of exposure and understanding and perspective on, on some of the healing stuff. They think it's cool, they're open, but, you know, they just, they showed up. And so, you know, one of my friends, uh, you know, one of the women afterwards, you know, said, I, I had this experience, but I, I don't know how to, I, I'm not really sure how to explain it. And I said, okay. And uh, so, you, well, let's, let's, let's explore that some more. Well, she saw her angels for the first time in her third eye. But she didn't even, she, she wasn't sure. She said, well, I saw, I think I saw my angels. But they were like between my eyebrows. And I said, well, that's your third eye. That's awesome. So, you know, we, we talked some more about that. And she was like, no, I could really see them. And I got a little nervous. And so I pulled back. But I know I would have seen even more if I let myself. And so, like, that, that, that's just, to me, very exciting. So she was very excited, and especially the more we talked about, you know, what that experience was. And um, lots of color, lots of purple, um, just really feeling an inner peace. Um, someone else that I've, you know, worked on recently after I, you know, we did a healing session, had a lot of throat issues and um, all of a sudden was having, you know, some sinus drainage and some other things. And so, you know, we, you know, we even talked through that. Well, okay, well, that's, your, that's your fifth chakra. That's all about speaking your truth and, you know, not biting your tongue and, you know, being open and honest and, you know, communicating with what's going on instead of swallowing it. And um, so, you know, there was some physical reaction after the healing of literally purging and getting stuff out of your out of her space, and so it, it's been interesting because different people have had completely different experiences. Someone else, um, you know, I've done some group healing work too lately, and uh, and it's all distance. And you know, somebody's got a, a, a an angel hanging out with them the whole time they're they're laying there receiving the healing energy, you know, and they're seeing this. So it's it's pretty pretty exciting stuff that either either it's wow I feel awesome to wow I saw my angels and you know other stuff in between. I like that. I just wanted to share that story because it seems like your confidence level is growing and giving you that validation for next week. Where if you hadn't had that experience, then maybe this opportunity wouldn't have presented itself. We don't know. We just know that the opportunity has presented itself and it's an opportunity to kind of put you out there and, and continue to build and grow as a person? Uh, no, you're, you're absolutely right because, um, yeah, I've, I've gone through little waves of, ooh, am I ready to do this? And then it's like, yes, I'm ready to do this. <laughs> you know, um, and, and it's working. And the, the validation, yeah, I am incredibly deeply grateful for the validation that it's just sort of like, you know, helping push me along. See that? Look, you keep asking for signs. So, all right, we'll give you some more signs. <laughs> and uh, oh, and another case in point. So, so this was a cool experience. Just um, actually, just the other day. So, you know, I mentioned that I'm in a, I'm in a couple different closed Facebook groups um, that have healers and readers and different things in it. And and somebody that I've gotten to know. Um, I had seen, just happened to see a comment from her that she had a migraine and she was miserable. Well, I've had a, a funny thing is actually 2010 is when I had migraines since when I was a child and I stopped having them in 2010. So yeah, 2010 was really a big year for me. <laughs> um, so I can completely empathize with just how miserable a migraine can cause you to feel. And so I messaged her and I asked her, I said, would you like me to send you a healing? Because, um, you know, you can run around feeling like you're full of good intentions, want to help people, but I really don't believe that you know, it, it, it's right or it was even ethical to sort of go into somebody else's space, even if you have good intentions without their permission. And so an hour later, I got a message back, oh, yes. Please do. I'm ready to hurl, were her words. <laughs> and, um, 
so I've been playing with the polarity balancing, which I know is really helpful. And I literally, but I did it differently, so it was significantly quicker. And then I, um, I went ahead and just sent her, sent her a healing. And I got the first text I got back from her was like six minutes later that said the nausea is almost gone. Thank God. Thank you. And um, I'm like, well, that's awesome. You know, and then a little bit later, she had just posted out in the group. She, you know, and then she messaged me later. But she's like, you know, shout out to Yvette. Um, I had this migraine where I usually end up in urgent care because I'm so bad and in so much pain and so sick, uh, you know, and it's gone. And that literally happened within 10 or 15 minutes. And um, so I'm like, sweet. So... I was very, again, very grateful for the, uh, for the validation because I know on a very deep level that when I send out a healing, it's going to help. It's going to do something absolutely awesome. Um, but I don't always know what that is. And it may not be what you logically think it could be. It could be something else. And so it was, I was very excited that someone had a migraine, was absolutely miserable, and was back functioning relatively quickly. You know, she's a, she's a mother with young children that, you know, she had all sorts of stuff she needed to be doing, and she really didn't have the luxury of crawling up into a ball and waiting for the hell to pass. So, so that was really cool, too. So um, I was grateful I for like, that. I like that you had mentioned that it was a Facebook group, so... For those that listen that don't listen here, I mean, that don't live here, you know, they may not be able to see you next week, but that also means that you have a Facebook page and a website where people can get more information about uh, polarity balancing and your energy healing? Yes, 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 yes. So, um, so it's like things have really been on a real big upswing. So it literally, in July, it had dawned on me, I need to set up a healing room. Because I was just sending out healings, just like setting a private space and somewhere and, you know, sending out a healing. And it's like I had, you know, the aha moment. Need to set up the healing room. Regardless of what I'm doing, I need that, that dedicated space. So set up the healing room and then started uh, just getting more feedback and then offering healings. And then um, with this event coming up, I knew that I needed to Get all my other, get some more ducks in a row, but this really helped push that along. So, I do have a um, a Facebook business page, and it is Evening Shade Mountain Healing. Um, I'm literally in the process of getting a website stood up um, right now, and it's going to be up in the next handful of days, and that's going to literally be Evening Shade Mountain Healing dot com, and um, my email is even Yvette at eveningshademountainhealing.com. So um, I'm just really excited to, you know, be getting myself out there and letting I, – I really feel strongly like I just need to put myself out there and I think which is true for everybody, you know, the right the, – the people that are supposed to come to you find you. Sometimes it's through a referral. Sometimes they just accidentally trip over something um, or – you know, someone else says something and says, oh, you should check this person out because they, they've got something to offer. So I'm just right now really working on putting those things out there and, and so I can be found when people uh, think that there's a good match and that there's something maybe that I can help them with. Or it could be a family member that sees what you don't see and points you in the right direction. Or that too. That's so tr- so very true. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we got to give him credit, man. I mean, he's been guiding you I know. probably longer yeah. than you know. <laughs> no, I agree. My dad's, my dad's working it on the other side. I agree. So is my grandmother. I know that my grandmother is, too, my dad's mom. My grandma's hanging out a lot, too. So I'm very deeply grateful. I'm, a, I'm happy just for the positioning because we actually get you before you be get, become famous. So it would be good to actually... <laughs> speak with right. you in like six weeks where you're actually, and today you saw a hawk, maybe you're riding on the wings of a hawk in like six six months when we follow up with you to see how things are going. 
Yeah. No, I know. I, I, I know. And, uh, you know, one of the pieces of information I recently got from somebody is, like, for the healing work that I'm, I'm doing and the energy that I'm channeling, um, you know, the feedback I'm getting is no one else is doing this. Now, granted, you can say people are, are, are sending out energy, you know, and I, I completely understand this, but it's like, nope, this, is, this one's different, this flavor of what you're doing, no one is doing. And so you need to start actually documenting what you're doing because at some point this is going to be something where you're going to write a book and you're going to train other people to do it. So um, it'll be a lot of fun to see where we're at at some point and look back and go, oh, remember that interview? <laughs> and, uh, you know, oh, and I guess I wrote a book. So um, so stay tuned. Not sure when exactly what that timing will be, but um, it's like, well, I'll stay open to that and see where we go. Absolutely. And for those that uh, want to get in touch with Yvette, if you're actually in town here in Atlanta, it is at www.fallintowellness.com. If you can check that out, you can see uh, Yvette's actually doing evening shade mountain healing. Uh, she's also doing the polarity therapy. And as she mentioned, there's other, other practitioners there as well. It's $20 to attend, and that includes yep. to all the talks and demonstrations and one service. So you can actually, for 20 bucks, hear all the different modalities and actually get a polarity healing performed by the one and only Yvette Metzik. Woohoo! Exactly. Or you could check out other practitioners, and it's just another ten dollars for other sessions too. So it'll be a lot of fun to, you know, go try out some different modalities and see what resonates with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Twelve to six on next on Sunday, which is the twelfth of November. Twelve to six. Uh, so with that, uh, one thing that in closing, because we are at the top of the hour, you had mentioned at the beginning was it was all me. So. I think that's the big, my big takeaway from this call. Uh, everyone kind of gets in their own way looking outside themselves about things that are happening, but when you kind of take a step back and realize this is what the perception that we're seeing, and when you change that perception, you can actually change your reality. Uh, with that, we are Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. I am Hamza. And I am David. And thanks again for spending time with us today, Yvette. We look forward to hearing many wonderful things. Thank you, Hamza. Thank you, David. I really appreciate uh, you spending some time with me. Yes, have thank a good you. one. You too. Bye. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast. Please check us out on our website at intrinsicmotivation.life where you can click on the speak pipe button and leave any suggestions for a future podcast that you'd like us to cover. Also check us out on our social media sites. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook page, iTunes podcast, in addition to Stitcher and Google Play, all under Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. Check you out next time. Have a great day.